Everybody, so are you ready to work on our October watercoloring card kit of the month? This month we're going to be using this cute devilish Lucy CC design image. Isn't she adorable? Really cute. I like that little tail. And I've already stamped my image on um, Canson 140 pound watercolor paper with um, Ranger Archival Jet Black ink. So let's get started. Okay, so it looks like this month we're going to color her skin a little bit different tone. So I'm going to start with um, tea dye this time and give her a little bit darker shaded face. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on the end of my brush. So I've got that little dab right there on the end. And I always start by laying down my ink where I want it to be darkest first. And I want her, her face, this side, to be more shadowed than this side. So I'm going to lay down my ink over here. So I'm just going to lay down my ink right along the edge of her face, underneath of her hairline. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off. And every time my, my brush leaves the paper, I'm either wiping it off or I'm grabbing some more ink. And I don't want that line to dry, so I'm going to be pretty quick and go back you know, and start spreading it this way. You're just going to work that line clear over here to her ear. Like that. It gives it a nice little shade, more shaded over here on this side, and then it pulls it that way and it lightens up. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of, a little bit more, and I'm going to do her neck. So again, I want it to be shadowed on this side, so I'm going to put my ink down right there, and then wipe my brush off and then come back with just water and wipe it towards this side of her neck. Then we'll go down here and we'll do her legs. And I'm going to have my shadows fall on the inside of her leg and underneath of her skirt. And just use that little bit I laid down to pull over to this side. this side. And I let it dry in between layers. So usually by the time I start, if I start at her face and I work my way down to her legs, I'll come back, it'll be dry, her face will be dry again for the next layer. So again, I want to darken her face up just a little bit more, so I'm going to grab a little bit more of my tea dye. And I'll still start where I want it to be darkest, so I'm going to lay my ink down on this side. And then just pull that ink away from the side and over to this side. So do her neck. And then we'll get her legs. This leg. Okay, I'm liking the shading on that, but now I'm going to go in and we're going to add um, a little bit of pink tone to her face. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit of Tattered Rose with um, the tea dye. So let me grab my little laminated sheet. Okay, 
Okay, so I've got a little laminated sheet. You could use the back of a CD box, your acrylic block, whatever you have laying around. There's something you can wipe off. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my tattered rose on my brush. So I've got my little bit on there, and I'm just going to wipe that right here onto my craft mat. And then I'm going to clean my brush off. And I'm going to grab just a little tiny, tiny dot, just the very end of my brush of the tea dye. So I've got just the very end of my brush, and I'm going to swirl that in here into this mixed to mix it up with my tattered rose. And that'll give it a pink cast. And then I'm going to use that to add some shadows and add a little pink to her face. I'm going to set that over here. So again, I'm going to wipe my brush off because I don't want to have that much ink on my brush from mixing it up. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my mixed paint. And I'm still going to start where I want it to be darkest, so I'm going to lay it down over here on this side. And then just lightly brush it across. Grab a little bit more. A little bit up here underneath of her, underneath of her hair. Do along her chin here too. And you want to get a little bit on her neck. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow down here on her leg. This side. Like that. Then we're going to go and we're going to add some color to her cheeks. So for that, we're going to use warm lipstick. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my warm lipstick on the end of my brush. And to make sure your brush is still wet, so you might want to test it on your hand or on your paper towel to make sure it's still got some water um, flowing in your little, in your, um, your detail brush. And then I've got my little bit of warm lipstick here on the end of my brush, and I'm just going to put that where I want her to have pink cheeks. And then I'm going to wipe that excess off, and I'm just going to very lightly go in and kind of tap my brush around on the edges just to soften those so it's not quite so harsh. And after I've wiped it around just a little bit, I, you know, I come and I wipe it off on my on my paper towel so that it can, because um, it picks up ink, and I don't want to continue jabbing it around, so I move that off to the side. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry, and then if I need to come back after it's dry, I'm gonna add another coat. But we're gonna go and start on her hair because it's black and it's gonna take a few layers. So I'm gonna grab my black soot. Grab a, just a dab on the end of my brush here. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with um, laying it down up here at the crown of her head. I'm just going to go in with my black soot, and I'm just going to wipe that right along the edge of her head. And then I'm going to use that ink that I laid down to bring down further into the into her hair. And this is going to take multiple layers because it's it's black. Get a nice spreading it down as far as it'll go without leaving um, a shadow line.
Okay, that looks pretty good for a first coat. So let's go down and I'm going to add a little bit right here along her dress on her hair down here and get it started coming up toward to meet my ink that's already laid down at the top here. It's like I said, it's going to take multiple layers because it, it fades out to a pretty um, light gray. And let's get this other side right over here. So I got a little bit on her cheek right there, so I'm going to wipe that off. With just the water I have in my brush, just lightly go across that. And then dab it a little bit with my paper towel. And that looks pretty good for our first coat. So that's pretty good. So let's go, I'm going to add a little bit more... Um, one lipstick to her cheeks while I'm waiting for her hair to dry there a little bit. So I'm going to go grab me just a little bit more on the end of my brush of my worn lipstick. And again, I'll just tap a little bit into the center of her cheek and then wipe all that excess off and then just use what I put down on her cheek to kind of move around. And remember to wipe your brush off in between tapping so that you don't continue to carry the, the ink further out in her cheek. I might give this side just a little bit more. Okay, I'm liking that. That looks pretty good. So let's go, her hair's still a little bit damp, so I'm going to go down here and add a first layer to her shoes, and that's going to be black set too, so we'll grab a little bit of that, and I want the dark, the shoe to be darkest on the outside here, and I want it to be lighter in the middle, so I'm going to lay down my ink on the outside of her boot, and then carry it up towards that little middle flap. And I've got quite a bit on my brush for moving it around, so I'm just going to go with this really light color right here in the middle. And that starts to give it a little bit of a tint in there. And then I'll grab a little bit more and we'll do this other side. Move that ink up away from the line and soften your line. And then use, whoops, wipe a little bit off, that's pretty dark. And use just a little bit here in the middle to give that a little bit of a grayish tone. Maybe along the sole of her boot just a little bit to get that started. Okay, that looks pretty good for our first coat. So let's go up here and do some more on her hair. So again, I'm going to start with my black soot at the crown of her head. And I'm just going to go along the edge. So I run out and then I'm going to grab a little bit more. I'm going to do over here on this side. right along, spreading that ink down further onto her hair. And then I'm going to come up from the other way, so I'm going to go down here at the bottom and put a little bit. Spread 
spread that ink back up towards where we left off up here at the top. Soften my line just a little bit up here at the top. So it's getting a little bit darker, so that second coat's made it a little bit darker. So I'm going to let that dry and we'll add a little bit. I'm going to add another coat still. I'm going to go down here and add a little bit more to her boots. So we'll grab some more black soot, lay it down here on the edge, and use that ink to darken up her sole, her, her boot, just a little bit more. I'm going to grab a little bit more for this other side over here. Same for this side. I'll lay down a little bit of ink and then bring my bring it over to the side, to the middle of her boot. Grab a little bit to wipe on this side. Just lightly bring that up into the center. Okay, those are looking pretty good. I might add yet another coat. After that dries, we'll see what that looks like. Well, let's go up here and add a little bit more to her hair. It looks like it's dried pretty good. I think I'll start, I didn't add any more on this side, so I'm going to add a little bit more down here underneath. We'll start there since I know that part's dry. Let's get a little bit in between her tail right there. Alright, so now I'm going to, I think I'll add a little bit just of, of my black soot right above her ear and pull it up the other way just this time so I can darken up this bottom section a little bit more. I'm just going to pull that up until my line fades out like that. And then I'll grab a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing um, along the edge of her bangs right here. I'm going to add my black soot right along the edge of her bang. And then I'm going to use that ink to pull up into the top of her hair. That way it'll darken it up a little bit more down here towards the bangs a little bit more. of her little horn and pull it down from there and I think I'll add some right along this little curly Q too And I'm going to avoid this little curly cue right here so that it is lighter than the piece in the back and then this side so it kind of stands out a little bit more. Okay, I'm liking how that looks so far, um, but I'm going to let that dry and, and maybe add another coat. But I'm going to go down here and darken up her shoes, just one more coat I think. So it's all about layering. You're just going to have to, depending on how much ink you put down when you color, um, will depend on how many layers you want or how, what look you're going for. Black's pretty hard to, um, to do, so... You 
you just lay it down and then I might use a little bit of my black from her shoe to put down here on the sole of her boot just a little bit Okay, I'm liking those. That looks really good. I don't think I'll add more to her boot down here. I may add a little bit more to her dress or to her hair. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit more. And so while that is drying, I'm going to mix some color for her dress. And for her dress, we're going to use barn door and fired brick. So I'm going to get my barn door out. And again, I have my little... Um, laminated sheet I'm going to use for that. So I'm going to grab some barn door and the dress is quite a big area so I'm going to get just a little bit more than I did for her face. I'm going to try to pick up a little puddle of ink on the end of my brush and then I'm just going to stick that on here like that and I think I'll grab just I think I'll grab another dot because that doesn't look like very much kind of pounce my brush around to get some of that ink off my brush and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my fired brick and I'm just tapping the end of my brush in there and I left the barn door on the brush and I'm just going to swirl that fired brick around in my barn door and then I'll clean the brush off because I definitely don't want to use it with that much stuff all over my brush. So I'm going to give it a squeeze and let the water run out of my brush and clean all that red off of my brush. Alright, so let's get my girl back. Move that over to the side. And I think since while I was mixing my paint, my black soot has dried a little bit. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add um, a little bit more to her hair. That way it can dry while before we do her horns a little bit more. So I'm going to grab just a little bit of that. And I'm going to darken up. I think I'll darken it up here just at the top just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit right here along this side. Whoops, and a little bit more. Just a little bit right here along this side. Okay, I'm liking how dark that is, so I think I'm going to leave it at that shade. So I'm liking that. Like I said, you might not have to add multiple layers. It just depends on um, how much paint you put down the first time and how dark you want it to be. Black's kind of persnickety, so you have to work with it just a little bit. All right, so now we're going to use our mixed paint. So I've got my barn door and my fire brick all mixed. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that. And I want my dress to be darkest on the sides of the dress and then lighten up here in the middle. So I'm going to lay down my ink right along the side, like this. And then before it dries, I'm going to just pull that, because I don't have very much on my brush. So I'm just going to pull that out here, being careful going around my heart, out into the middle. like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to grab a little bit of ink and then go down this side of her dress. And since I don't have very far to go on this side, I wipe my brush off. And then I'm just going to take my ink and pull that away from that line out here into the middle of her dress. And we're going to cover up that line. Like that. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to, let's go down here and add a little bit to her heart on her tail. So her, while her dress is drying, and then we'll go up here and do her sleeves. So I'm going to add a little bit on this side of her tail. A little heart. And then I'll use that little bit I've laid down to brush up towards the top. So it'll lighten up over here where the sun is going to be shining on it, or the moon. Okay, and while we did that, that gave this a little bit of a chance to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of shadows here in her arms. And then I'm going to do right along her skirt, like that. And then I'm going to use that ink I laid down to pull up onto her sleeves and into the middle of her dress. like that. That looks pretty good and I'm really liking how it's really light down here. Oh, let's go up here and do her little horns too. So for her horns, grab you a little bit of your paint and there's her horns have got these little like teardrop things in them. In them. I'm going to try not to paint that because I want it to stay white. So I'm going to try to be careful going around a little drop there and try to keep it white in the middle. Okay, and the same thing for this side. I'm going to lay it down right along the bottom here. And go up around that little teardrop and up towards the top of her little horn. And then we'll let that dry and we'll come back and add another coat. So let's go down here and add another coat to her skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down my ink on this side of her skirt this time. I'm going to wipe off my excess ink and then I'm going to use that line to pull over to this side. And I'm going to do the same thing for this side. I'm going to be careful to avoid my little heart right there. Put a line of ink down the back. Might go just a little bit darker around the heart there. And then pull that line out into the middle of her dress till it blends out with the other side. Yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, and let's get her sleeves. Get her sleeve. Bring that to the middle. Get this sleeve. Okay, I'm liking how the top of that looks too, but I'm going to go up here and darken up her horn a little bit. Let's put a little bit down here on the bottom more. And let's get this other side. A little bit up here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit to this heart down here on her tail. And again, you can add as many coats as you want for however dark you want it to be. But I'm liking that. I think she looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to leave her hair and her dress that shade. And then I'm going to, let's go do um, the background around her. So for that, we need to have pumice stone. So let me grab my pumice stone out. Move her over here for a second. 
I'm get my little laminated sheet. And then I'm going to grab some pumice stone. And where's that? Right here. I'm going to grab a little bit of that onto my brush. And I'm going to stick it down here on my little pumice stone butterfly like that. And I want to dilute my butterfly or my ink here. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to squish it until an actual drop of water comes out of my brush. Like that. And just mix it around like that. So I've got a big puddle of diluted pumice stone there. And I'm just going to use that to go all the way around the outside of my girl. So I may wipe my brush off. I don't think I need that much on there. I'll grab a little bit of my pumice stone, my diluted pumice stone, and I'm going to be careful not to touch the girl. If you're afraid of um, touching the girl, you might want to do the shading first and then come back and do the coloring, and then you don't have to be so worried about that. I'm just going to go all the way around and I'm laying down my first little coat and then I'm just going to use that to move it away from her until it comes out here and it becomes nothing. So same thing up here. I'm grab me a little bit more. I'm just going to lay down some kind of right next to her. And I've left a little bit of space so that I can go back in. In case I push it that way, it won't be touching her still. So we go in and we'll just use our water and our brush to wipe that line out here into our background. And I use this color this time because... I wanted her to look like she was maybe outside going trick-or-treating or it's dusk outside. So it gives it a little bit more of a dark shadowish color. And we're just going to do that all the way around. And if you have lots on your brush, you can go, I um, mean, you know, wipe the excess off like we did before. You wipe the excess off on your paper towel and then come back and just spread that ink away from her out into your background. After I lay down my initial line, I usually wipe my brush off and then come in with just the water, depending on how much was on my brush, and spread it out here. Be careful next to that red. Me and my red. I'm constantly getting that stuff everywhere. Get right here in between our legs too. And then we'll want to give her something to stand on, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this to go across the bottom down here. Like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm kind of liking that. But if you want to darken it up, you would go in and use your little, um, grab a little bit more of your pumice stone on your brush and add it to your diluted puddle. And you could come back in. And I've added just a little bit. 
you could come back in and add a little bit more of a shadow next to her if you wanted. But it's still diluted because you have the water in your puddle there. But that would be up to you. Let's make this side of her body a little bit darker on this side. We'll say the moon's coming from over here and this side of her body's more in shadow. And a little bit more darker shadows over here. Like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm liking how that background looks. So let's do now, let's grab our um, Wink of Stella glitter pen that came in your kit. So you've got a black Wink of Stella glitter pen this time. And I'm going to grab my nonstick craft mat. And I want to add a little bit of sparkles to her hair. So I'm going to take my um, Wink of Stella glitter pen and I'm just going to scribble it on my craft mat over here like this. And then I'm going to use my brush to pick some of that up. And I'm just going to lightly go over her hair and add in some of that sparkly glitter paint. And you won't see it very much until you shift your card and then you will see the sparkles just a tad bit. Like that. That looks pretty good. Those sparkles. Okay, and then I took my pen and I did, um, I used it to color in this heart right here. And I didn't even bother with the water brush. I just took my pen and colored this heart in with the sparkles. And I also did her tail. with the sparkles. And you could paint it on with your brush if you wanted. I just didn't bother. I just took the pen and colored it in so it would have lots of sparkles on there. Like that. And that is our coloring. So let's put our card together. Alright, so I have my whole kit here. So let's go ahead and get started putting that together. So take this girl and we can go ahead and attach our girl to um, our mat frame here. So you're just going to use whatever adhesive you like best. I'm just using my trusty tape runner. And we'll attach that to this. I usually put a little bit more on my watercolor paper than I do for my Copic ones because it's a little bit thicker paper and because I got it wet, it sends it. I think it sticks better if I put a little bit more glue on the back than I normally would. Okay, and then let's kind of dump some of this stuff over here. We don't want to lose any parts. Like this cute little top to the mush or to the pumpkin. We'll set that over here on the side. Okay, so you're going to decide. Since we don't have any parts that are going behind any of the other parts, I'm going to go ahead and attach this black piece to my base. And we can just layer it all right on top of the base because we're not going to have any ribbon or anything sticking behind it this time that we have to worry about tucking underneath. That. And next comes this little orange piece. Taped it to my tape paper. Okay, and then you can decide. And my piece has a little pumpkin down here, so in case it's showing, I'm going to stick it right side up. That. And then next goes on this little black piece.
Okay, and that is kind of set onto the card a little bit um, crooked. So I'm going to put that like this. And then next comes the little piece with the diamonds. And that piece is also set on there crooked. So I'm going to put that one right like this. And then next we have the fence. So we've got our little fence. And I didn't pop that up or anything. I just stuck that on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue. And I might put a little bit in the middle there. And that is kind of hmm, about three-fourths of an inch up, maybe. Like so. And then next came our girl. So let's put some glue on her. And I didn't pop dot her this time. But you could. She looks really cute. It popped it off of the top of the card. And she is like... Oops, try to get her straight. Like that. And then let's do our pumpkins. So I have these pumpkins, and they come with the two leaves and the two stems. Before I do that, I'm going to add some um, lines on my pumpkins, and you can do that with either um, a Versamark pen or um, I'm going to use my Copic YR27. And I'm just going to take my pen and I'm going to say, hmm, there's a line on my pumpkin that goes from this little thing up here down to this. So I'm just going to wing it. Like that. And then I'm also going to make it have some shadow down here on the bottom. So I'm just going to take my pen and give it a little bit of a shadow down there. And I'm going to do the same thing for this smaller one. I'm going to go from the little dip and I'm just going to kind of say, mmm, it goes, curves out like that. And this side curves down like this. And shadow across the bottom. Like that. That makes it look like there's some lines on there, at least, so it doesn't look just like a piece of flat cardstock. And then I'm going to attach the little stems to my pumpkins. So I've got my liquid glue for that. And I'm just going to put a little dab here at the base. And I'm just going to stick that on like that one. And then this side. Whoops. Try not to get it all over me. And put one on this side. Like that. And then you'll want to attach your leaves, so however you want to do those. Put that one like so. I think I'll make this one go this way. Like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then we're going to put it onto our card here. Okay, so you're going to decide where you want your pumpkins to go. And I wanted mine to be, I wanted this smaller one to set on top of this. Put a little bit of glue on the back of this one and decide where I want that one to go. And I'll tuck it a little bit underneath of the scallop here. Like that. And then this one, I'm going to put like that. And there, that looks pretty good. And then you have this little saying, so I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of that. And I printed this little saying out on my computer. So it's not a stamp set. And I'm 
just going to say I want it to go like this. Like that. That looks pretty cute. Okay, so that leaves us with the white dots on our cheek. And for that, I'm going to use my Sharpie white paint pen. And I'm going to shake it before I use it with the, the lid on. Because it never fails if I shake it with the lid off. It sprays everywhere and gets all over my project. And I'm just going to give her a couple of white dots on her cheek. Like that. And that is Devilish Lucy, our October watercoloring card kit of the month. So thanks for joining me this month. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.